and then select the option to restore the backup file onto the PS5, and that will restore it so that you have that save file on the console. Now, of course, restoring somebody else's backup file does reset your console, and personally, I would not really recommend trying to set this up on a retail console at the moment, because it is just a user land exploit at the moment. It does not, you know, have the ability to jailbreak the console. So that is the situation there with retail consoles. So instead, I'm going to set this up on my jailbroken console. It's much easier to get things set up on a console that already has an existing jailbreak. And of course, this is not going to work above firmware's 8.0 on the PS5 anyway. But I'll show you guys what happens when you try to load it on a higher firmware as well as a lower firmware so you can see the difference here. So let's go ahead and take a look at setting this up. So if we want to set this up in a jailbroken console, the easiest way is to use the save mounter, which you can download here. I'll leave a link to it in the description, savemount3.zip. You just download this over to your computer. Now on the PS5 itself, you want to have run the jailbreak and be loading ETA hen. And of course, this is on a firmware that is below 8.0. This is my 4.03 PS5. So this PS5 has ETA hen loaded. We have the ETA hen toolbox. You also want to make sure you have a network connection on your PS5 so it's connected to your local network and has a valid IP address there. As you can see, 192.168.137.14. So we have a valid IP. And then all we need to do here is simply go to our ETHEN toolbox or debug settings. And in the toolbox, we're going to head down to the settings menu and simply enable the option for PS5 debug by Sistrion CTN. And that will load PS5 debug on the PS5 which is used for the save mounter. This can take a while to start up, so just give it a few seconds. It should eventually give us a different notification. Okay, and there we go. As you can see, we now have the payload loaded, PS5 debug. Okay, so now we just run the Star Wars game because we need to create a dummy save file that we're going to be replacing. So we just need to create a base save file, and I believe you just have to run the game and get into the menus and it creates its own save file automatically once the game is launched. So you don't even need to actually create a save file once you're on the game. It will just create one automatically. So just let the game fully load up here so that we can make sure it has enough time to create the save file automatically. So we'll press the PS button and everything looks good there. So at this point we can go ahead and press the PS button and simply close out of the game. And that should have created our save file. So now all we need to do is mount that save file with the save mounter and replace it with the modified save for the exploit. So to do this, we're going to switch back over to our computer here. Now we want to run the save mounter, so we're going to open up the save mounter and run this application. Enter the PS5's IP address in the IP box and connect. And that will connect right there. So there we go. It detects my firmware is 4.03. Now this save mounter, I believe, only works up to like 7.61. But since the user land exploit in terms of the remote Lua loader function, it's not going to work above 8.0 anyway. So this should be fine for all consoles below 8.0. So we can go ahead and click patch and then give it a few seconds to do the patching and then click setup, which is going to grab the user accounts that are on the console and it detects my user account there. So select your user account that you're signed into and then get games, which will grab all of the games that you have installed. And again, this may take a while. It will take longer on a wireless connection. And then we can select the game from here. So here it is, Star Wars Racer Revenge. So you want to select it. It should be CUSA 03474, which is the US version of the game. And then we're going to click search. And that is going to search for the actual save data itself. And there we go. It has detected the save file. And now all we need to do is click mount to mount that save file so we can access the decrypted save data. And there we go, status save mounted. So now we just need to grab that data, which we can do using an FTP client like FileZilla. Just enter the same IP address of your PS5 in the host box. And the port number is going to be 1337 if you're using e a hen which has an FTP server built in. So once we have that up and running, we can then simply go to that location, which was MNT and then the PFS folder. So here is here save data. So we're just going to open that up. And this is our decrypted save data for the game that we need to replace with our Lua Core 1.0. We're just going to extract the Lua Core files here over to my desktop. So we have a Lua folder that contains all of the Lua files for the exploit and the vmczo.card, which is the virtual memory card for the PS2. And now we're simply going to drag and drop these into this folder and say overwrite. 
and that should go ahead and transfer the data over. There you can see VMCZO is being copied over and the Lua folder, and that should be done. There we go, complete. So if we look at the Lua folder, we have all of our Lua files in there, and our VMC0 card file has been copied over, and that should be it. So now all we need to do, if we up one directory here, then go back to the save mounter, very important that you remember to unmount the save data once you have swapped out the save data and you're done with the save, we unmount it, and then once we're unmounted, we can disconnect as well from the tool, and that will disconnect the save mounter, and now if we refresh in Philozilla, that folder disappears because it's no longer mounted. So that should be it. So now if we go back over to our PS5 once more, we run the Star Wars Racer Revenge game. The save file should now be set up on there. So here we go, PlayStation 2. Now, so far, I haven't had any success trying this with a fake package version of the game, which would be good for testing for people to be able to use that. Um, but it only seems to work with the retail copy at the moment. So, or at least that's been my experience so far. But uh, yeah, so anyway, here we go. So we're getting into the game. Going to wait for this to load up. It takes a few seconds here, and that says press start. So we press the touchpad button, and then we need to scroll down to the options button here. Select that. So we get options, and then we select Hall of Fame, which is actually loads the exploits, and there is mounting save data for Lua Transition, Master Core Initialized. And here we go, we now have it loaded up here, Lua Core 1.0 by Gejine, Remote Lua Loader on the PS5 Firmware 4.03, and it is listening to the PS5's IP on port 9026, which means you can send Lua files over the network to execute on the console using that IP address and port number. Okay, so here we have a little test Lua script that we can send over that should pop a notification on the PS5 saying hello from your PS5. So let's go ahead and see if this works. So we can copy this into Netcat GUI, the enter the IP address of the PS5 and port number is 9026. And if we inject payload here, we should see that we get our prompt showing up there. So executed successfully, hello from your PS5, executing payload. So there it is. So yeah, you do have a functioning remote Lua loader now using this particular game. Okay, so I've set up the save file on my 10.01 system, which has, of course, the issue. It has the particular function stripped from it. So theoretically, this should not work, or at least sending the Lua files won't work, but we'll see how far it gets here. So let's go ahead and select Hall of Fame, as we did before on my 4.3 system. Mounting save data for Lua transition, so this is the same so far. Uh, and, oh, there we go, so platform PS5 10.21, everything looks like it's initialized, but then it says PS5 from where 10.21 does not support remote Lua loader, run Lua script locally. So unfortunately, that function is not available on 10.01, and you click OK to that message, and it is just a black screen. So anyway, that's the general setup. I only really recommend setting this up on a console that already has a previous jailbreak so that you can quickly get the save file installed with the save mounter without any, you know, big deal, without having to restore a backup file or requiring a PSN account that you can use to, you know, have to resign the save files using, you know, the Discord save bots or the Apollo save tool, which are the other options on retail consoles that you can use to get this installed. But personally, I think if you're on a retail console, it's better to wait to see if anything comes of this and if this ends up turning into a fully fledged, you know, exploit chain to actually jailbreak the console at some point in the future, if there can be alternatives found for the functions that were stripped from the emulator to allow it to be chained with the kernel exploit to use it as a method of jailbreaking in the future, we'll have to wait and see. But this is what we've got so far, a user land exploit using the master core exploit uh, from Gejina here using Star Wars Racer Revenge. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys 